1 Peter 1, 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed. Not of what kind of seed? Corruptible. It could fade. It can go away. It can be rendered useless. Corruptible seed. But you're being born again of incorruptible. 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 Heaven and earth may pass away, but that word will never pass away. Being born again of incorruptible seed by the word of God. That's the incorruptible seed. God's word. There's many passages that say that God's word is seed. And here we find out that it's incorruptible seed, which lives and abides forever. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. We magnify you and we glorify you. Have your way in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, we love you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Throw the graphic back on the screen before we get into the next scripture. I don't know if you guys will remember a few years ago, I uh, had a message series called uh, How Bad You Want It. I was observing turtles, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me during that. Uh, put the graphic back on the screen if you can. And so here I am at a restaurant. I'm sitting there. 30 floor, 34 floors up in the air. And I look out the window, and I'm seeing things, and I'm, something caught my eye at the bottom of the window. And lo and behold, if it's not that plant. Now, I'm a thinker. So I'm looking at that plant, and I'm like, how in the world did that thing get up here we're 34 34 floors up in the air yeah. we're in a skyscraper here yeah. what in the world is that there's no opening to those windows it's not like somebody you know is like you know fertilizing that thing or they it's just something that they want to how did it get there why is that thing there and then it and then it, they hit me and pastor Kimberly she says well that thing made it that's just against all odds and it just hit me yeah Against all odds. But yet it's there. And yet it's living. And it's growing. Shouldn't be there. But against all odds, it lives. Now throw up Romans 4.18. And I'm reading this out of the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation. Against all odds. I don't know if you're one of these people that you're thinking that that's your life right now. But if it is you, you want to keep coming during this message series. Because not just against some odds, but against all odds. When it looked hopeless. I wonder how many people, if they were honest this morning, you don't have to raise your hands, don't have to look at your neighbor. Feel like you're against all odds and that it's just, Hopeless. It just don't look good. It hasn't looked good. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Hopeless. Against all odds, when it looked hopeless, it looked hopeless. It looked hopeless. Oh, I'm going to hit you with so many scriptures on down this message series. That just because it looks the way doesn't mean that that's the way it is. It just looks that way. It's never hopeless with the word. It's never hopeless with God's seed. It's incorruptible seed. You've always got a fighter's chance when you got the word of God on your side. No matter how bleak it may appear, it is never hopeless. Hopeless. It just looks hopeless. And against all odds, when it looked hopeless, Abraham believed. Abraham believed 
you're going to have to do some believing. A lot of people is like, well, if God exists, if God's going to do this, it'd just be like, you know, having a seizure or something like that. It'll just fall on you. It'll fall on you. If it does, it does. If it don't, it don't. You've got to make that effort. You heard the testimony this morning. God wanted to show up through us, but the man had to have faith that God's about to do something. And just like in the Old Testament, rise up and walk. Well, it looked hopeless. And against all odds, are you kidding me? This chair is my home. No, it just looked like it was against all odds. It just looked hopeless. But God. I said, but God. It's never hopeless. We've just got to believe. Abraham believed the promise and expected See, <laughs> believing is not sitting there clenching your wrists and crawling up in a fetal position in the dark corner of your home with a tear in your eye. You're not believing yet. Boy, it's quiet in here today. I don't know what, maybe, maybe worship wore you out today. I don't know. That's not believing. You're not, you're, you're not in faith yet. Hello. Yeah. Now, that's not a condemnation. It just, it's just we're, we're trying to put a, a dot on the map here. We're trying to locate where you are. Because if not, you know, don't, don't think that you're in faith and you're not and, and, and be expecting something. See, Abraham believed so he was expecting. That's right. He believed so he was expecting. Amen. And expected God to fulfill it. He took God at his word. Why could Abraham believe? Why did he expect? Because he had God's word on it. That's right. Pastor, I think you're flaky. You're hearing from God all the time. Well, you never hear from God. I think you're flaky. Why is it that, you know, pray? What does the Bible say? Pray without ceasing? That doesn't mean you get a candle out and get in your living room, turn soft worship music on and just, you know, pray in tongues all day. That's communication with God all day. Pray without ceasing. We have went over it already about meditation. Meditate day and night. Pray day and night. Pastor, God just don't understand. He ain't called me to the ministry. I got stuff I got to do every day. Well, gee, he must have missed it when he said that you need to meditate day and night and, pr and pray without ceasing. I guess he just didn't see you coming in the future. It's a part of your heart and your being. That's, listen, that's why you don't get in the fetal position with a tear in your eye in the corner in a dark room of your house. It's because you heard something. You heard someone, and he spoke to you. If he just said, get up, well, then just get up. He doesn't have to tell you what's going to happen in the next two months of your life. You have faith to get up because that's what you heard. So get up and get about your business. Keep tuned in, and you'll hear something else. Mm -hmm. He took God at his word, and as a result, he became the father of many nations. God's declaration over him came to pass. Imagine that. Your descendants will be so many that they will be impossible to count. Right. Now then, follow with me. This is going to get good. Just follow with me. I'm laying, I'm going to teach. Is that okay? I'm going to teach a little bit today. I might not start spitting and kicking. Let me teach a little bit. Some plants, not all, some plants have the ability to grow on buildings. Show it again. If you wonder how they got there, the answer is seed dispersal agents. 
via wind, birds, animals. For instance, crows and pigeons are good examples. They eat fruits along with the seeds. But the seeds don't get digested easily and comes out when they excrete. Yeah. We all know what that means. Yeah. Okay. So when these excreta fall on buildings, and if the conditions favor plant growth, the seed germinates. I need you to pay attention, okay? Getting up in the middle of the aisle, sometimes it feels good, and we need a release, but it's times like this when you want to tune out is where your life can change. It's those teaching moments that you get something in you that stays with you the rest of your life. See, the plant generally grows on cracks. Wait a minute. When these excreta fall on buildings, and if the conditions favor plant growth, there we go, the seed germinates. The plant generally grows on cracks and holes in buildings because water gets collected in it keeping moisture intact for the roots. Oh, yeah. What it basically means is that some plants, not all, actually do not need soil. Mm, golly, I can't wait to start using all this... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to package something up for you. I know what's coming. But all plants, they do need water. All plants need light. And all plants need nutrients. Most get nutrients from the soil. And others, listen, from their environment. As shown on the graphic, some plants can grow just about anywhere. A plant growing 34 stories high on the side of a building will use, listen, it uses the, the minerals present in the building material. If you thought about it, there's different kinds of rocks and, and different kinds of cements and they're all put together. Well, that has minerals in them. It's using what it's been given in its environment to feed off of. Amen. If you're bored, say amen. Mm. I'm telling you, these... These teaching times is where you're going to grow. Don't be bored on me. Don't be bored on me. No, no. I'm checking up on you. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. So, it can use the materials present in the building material. Use those minerals. Listen, as well as those which seep down through rainfall. Certain rain has certain kind of minerals in it sometimes as it comes down. Well, how do you think it comes up before it comes down? Amen. It also absorbs the water which is collected in the crevices. So. So you may feel swallowed up in life. Like the bird just coming. Whoosh, just chomped you up. I've been swallowed in life. Swallowed up. Feel like Jonah floating out there in the water. Got gobbled up. Come on. I thought I could do something, but I thought I was tough too. Man, I got swallowed up. I got found out real quick. Yeah. When you get swallowed up, you get swallowed up. Yeah. And so you're getting swallowed up in life. And just when you thought you had a break, 
Just when you thought you could see light at the end of the tunnel, it was you getting excreted. And you got excreted into a situation that seems like you're drowning because you're in that crack with the water. Well, I got swallowed up and then I got excreted out and I'm kind of feel like I'm drowning in water. But it's a divine setup that's against all odds. Because your dad said you'd never be nothing. Your mama said you'd never. You might not even know who your mama or daddy is. Your friend said you ain't going to amount to nothing. Matter of fact, when you went through school, the guidance counselor had enough of you, and they just confirmed it too. You ain't going to be nothing. You can't do nothing, can't ever be nothing. You just better learn you some kind of a trade or something. You ain't going to amount to nothing in life. And you believed it because all the swallowing that you had, of all the being excreted out in life, being shoved in a crack corner crevice somewhere, 34 floors above the earth in a bunch of water drowning in life. But yet the Lord says, against all odds, against all odds, I'll plant you somewhere you can grow. I'll plant you somewhere where you can flourish. Yeah. Yeah. I will plant you. Yeah. And it might feel like you're getting swallowed up, like you're getting excreted, like you're drowning in life. But I have a place for you. If God has a place and a plan in a way, whether it's animals, whether it's birds, whether it's wind, and able to make something grow 34 stories in the air from nowhere, what can he do with your life? What can he do with your life? I got another story for you. Can you handle another story? When visiting the Messiah volcano in Nicaragua, that volcano is known as, its nickname is the Gateway to Hell. And it was called that by the Spanish conquistadors many years ago. And I see why they could call it that too, because when we look down in there, it's pretty spooky looking, because it's active. And you saw that lava just, you saw it flowing. I mean, there it was. Kind of makes you feel a little funny, too. It's like, I guess this thing could just take off like a rocket at any second now, huh? Hmm, let me get a quick look and we'll just go. So I was astounded at not only the active volcano itself. That was pretty impressive. But listen, but the rich vegetation in a crater next to it that was at one time just the same as that. So I'm looking at this one. It's just lava and rock, and it's just, there's just nothing to it. And then you look over here, and you're like, well, now where in the world did that come from? Looks like somebody in these uh, gardening shows or something, like a whole team got together and just started to settle the valley down in there and just make it the most fertile place on planet Earth. How did that happen? You see, nobody went, <laughs> nobody went down there and purposely said, I'm just going to plant some stuff. Are you listening to me? Mm. The Messiah volcano emit, emitted toxic gas. Toxic. Sulfur dioxide that when mixed with the moisture in the air, it produces sulfuric acid, which eats up almost everything it's exposed to. Oh, yeah, it's coming. 
So seeing one crater with liquid magma running through it to the other crater, which had lush vegetation, was quite a contrast. I mean, I'm sitting seeing the polar opposites. How did that vegetation enriched area get that way? Because it was toxic, acidic, destroying everything around it. I mean, they have to replace, even when they go down on cables to, to like check stuff out, all these geologists and stuff, they have to replace them regularly because they, they've got old cables down there that they show that, it, that, that they can just hit over rock and just brittle. Here, and, but over here, wow, one is lush, one is toxic. How did that happen? Oh, I'm going to get ready. Listen, just tune in. Like I said, tune in. I'm going to use so many analogies, metaphors, and figurative speech here, okay? Right. Volcanic soil, also called andesol, forms after a volcanic eruption, listen, it deposits a layer of ash, pumice, and indigenous rock over the area affected. Poof. That happens by that eruption. Listen. Although the initial eruption can be devastating to everything around the region. I got one person that's kind of getting in, in on it now. You know where I'm going. One person so far. That's okay. See if we can help everybody on the bus here. Because you see, an eruption happened. And everything around it went chaotic. Kind of like... I got two DUIs and, and, and one assault charge. And I got one drug possession with intent to sell on my record. And also, I just happened to hear recently got a resisting arrest on my record. Blew up. Exploded. Stuff just flying everywhere. Toxic to be around. Devastating, destroying gases and sulfur. Nobody wants to be on, nobody's, listen, nobody's building a cabin on the side of that mountain to hang out. Just an explosion, devastating to everything and everyone around it. Do I have anybody on board now? Over time, a process called weathering breaks down the volcanic materials into dirt and soil. In other words, environment is so important. It can start the softening process even if you want to stay hard. I don't, I don't believe that stuff. Man, I'm from the street, man. I got street cred. Ain't nobody going to mess with me. What up, punk? Get you some. I'm hard. And you're explosive. And you wonder why nobody wants to hang around with you and life just doesn't seem to really be going forward. And you're always, it, 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 when you think you're going forward, you're on treadmill. You're toxic. But that's like churches like this. We just want to get you in the seats, even if you're going to roll your eyes while I preach. Even while everybody else is hugging, you might fist bump, maybe. Everybody else is smiling. We still hadn't seen that from you yet. Want to get you in that seat every Sunday. Because I, we know that the person of the Holy Spirit is in the house. And King Jesus will keep his word. And 
we want you in the environment that the weathering is going to start happening. Even if you don't want it to start happening because of the environment you're in. When I'm at church, I don't want to be at a strip club. If I was at a strip club, I ain't thinking about church. And if you can just stay in that environment, you don't even have, you can just go ahead. I ain't going to clap. I ain't going to say amen. I don't care what they say. Well, they doing a chili cook-off. Well, I'll be back for that. <laughs> That's fine. Weathering. When a volcano erupts, it sends things called proloclasts into the air. That's a big word for a hillbilly. These are particles of cooled magma that fall down onto the ground due to gravity. Despite how big and bad you think you are, Isaac Newton's already let us know that what goes up must come down. Any natural, listen, any natural high must obey natural laws. Natural to natural. If you have to take a substance for a high, you will come down. But there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party never ends. You can stay in the clouds for months off of that stuff. Hallelujah. I know when I got hit with the Holy Ghost, I railing around the floor laughing. Pastor Kimberly come in the floor, what in the world are you doing? I don't know what you're laughing about. I don't know. God's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Proloclasts can take various forms such as, listen, flakes. They think you're flaky. Or solid stones. Once again, I'm hard. Nobody going to tell me, anybody else, what, you think I'm a puppet on a string? Come they say amen when pastor says stuff. I ain't saying nothing like that. Forget about that, y'all. Ain't nobody going to tell me when to clap and amen and all that stuff. Bunch of clowns. Stolid stones. Once all this volcanic material has fallen down and formed a layer on the earth, it becomes a type of ground cover known as tephra. When the tephra is exposed to, look at your neighbor and say, time. And the elements. Look at them because I don't think they believed you the first time. Look at them say time. time. See, everybody wants to throw out, out the window. We just want it now. We, want it, we wanted it yesterday. Yeah. When Tefra is exposed to time and the elements, that's your environment. It breaks down into the soil. But it still contains all of the materials that were initially present in the magma that spewed from the center of the earth to create it. In other words, listen to this. You were born with explosive gifts, baby. There's stuff in you from your DNA that God put in there that even though you exploded... And it all come out. Not everything, all that came out needs to stay out. Am I going to have to pull a Hulk Hogan or something this morning? <laughs> you were born with explosive gifts made for his glory. But we tend to pervert them for our own pleasure rather than develop them for his glory. I can vaguely remember being four years old one time when we were living in a one-bedroom apartment. And my dad wasn't home. and mama, we, it, was, it snowed. I lived in the mountains of North Carolina. This is actually before I lived in Ash County. I was living in Allegheny County. Anyways. And the snow was so deep, we could not get to church. 
And I remember my mama saying, she says, well, son, what do you want to do since we can't get to church? This is before internet, cable TV, and all that kind of stuff, okay? I remember at four years old saying, I'll preach. Come on. Come on. Huh? Yeah. yeah. It was in me from the beginning. That's right. Until I got out of one environment and got into another. And then I wanted to use his gifts and talents that he put in me for my own pleasure. Because I didn't have a fear of being in front of people. Well, I had a gift of music too. I could play a guitar. Matter of fact, God blessed me that I'm very, I do okay on an electric guitar. And so it was so easy not being afraid to get in front of people. That when I found out I could pick that guitar up, see, listen, I was never the, I was I was skinny as a bean pole when I was growing up. Okay, that's a whole another story for a whole another message of me wanting to change my physical um, appearance. Thank you, but I don't want to get lost. But I found out that even though it wasn't really easy to get dates with girls. When I put that electric guitar in my hand, turned the amp up, and played some riffs and licks that they've heard on the radio, I got some heads to turn. I got a few numbers. I got a few dates. And then got with some other musicians, and we started playing at different places. Even got on the radio a little bit. Got to open in some places where national acts come in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I perverted what God put inside of me for my own pleasure. And the whole time, it was so I could be his mouthpiece to his people. So when all this stuff happened to me and my life exploded too, I tell people all the time that, you know, if you come and hung out with me at 23 years old, If I, at that time, I was arrested for being a Christian, there wouldn't be enough evidence to convict me. They wouldn't even have took a fingerprint. Man, who you lying to, fool? Get back out there. Uncuff him. He ain't no Christian. Amen. One of the processes that helped break down the tephra, listen, from being so hard, was the wind. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's why what our vision, vision one, of the, one of the parts of our vision, set an atmosphere to experience what? Holy Spirit. The wind, the Ruah of God. Because that wind is going to start breaking down the hard places. You see, when the wind blows small particles of sand across the surface of a volcanic layer, it acts like sandpaper. Your conscience. There's a rub going on. That's why, I'm be honest with you, we've had some people that can't sit in those seats week after week because they don't like the rub. Because they feel it. They feel that sandpaper. I don't like that. It's getting in my conscience. Mm -mm. No, I'm going to be with Pookie next weekend. We're going to roll up on that street. No, I got to go. I got to get out of here. Can't take it. And the more I keep hanging around that preacher there, the more it makes me want to go down and Tell Billy Bob that we got to cut them plants down in in the backyard of Grandma's house. (laughs) I don't know because last batch got me them rims on that car. This is looking pretty good this year. We got a lot of rain. Every time I listen to that preacher, I kind of want to do some early harvesting. (laughs) Rub. That sand, the wind of the Holy Spirit, it's like sandpaper. 
Listen, breaking off more small pieces and helping them turn the hard, solid rock into rich, volcanic soil. If you can just stay in the environment, get in word-enriched environments where the Holy Spirit is present, some things is just going to take care of itself. You don't have to enroll in every Bible class. You don't have to be there every Wednesday night for things to start happening. But I highly suggest coming on Wednesday nights because that's where we get in. I'm just saying. We, we, we learn the two plus two is fours in, in Wednesday nights. Okay? We really get deep and connect dots on Wednesday nights. But being in that environment will break off things. And another thing that can turn Tephra into soil is water. Once again, Holy Spirit, you can't get away from that. Sad to say, not every church that proclaims the name of Jesus has the Holy Spirit dwelling mightily in it. We are never to be condemners and judgers. For those that are new here, just, just know what our members already know. Our church, well, our church family already knows that if she comes in off the street, she just got off of a pole a few hours ago. She's got stilettos on and the skirt's too low and too high. But she needs Jesus. She don't need to run into your attitude. She needs to meet Jesus. So you can march up here and it doesn't matter the, the war wounds and the scars of your past life. We know that there's a new life coming for you. You can't undo what you did. You've been where you've been, but just because you started there doesn't mean that you're going to stay there. Hallelujah. And then the water of the Holy Spirit being in that environment can change things. But God forbid church has gotten so worldly that no people that do not know the Lord that can come and sit in the back of a church service and it's over in 45 minutes how about that that's amazing they got all that done in that short period of time wow and be in the back and never be convicted that's why I said that it's not that anybody's going to judge or condemn anybody like mm -hmm. But just being in the presence of God, if you're not feeling that, that wind of the Holy Spirit like sandpaper, if your conscience sitting being pricked, and I don't care what it says on the outside of the house, I don't know whose house you're in. Because he died for them too. And he's got plans and purposes for them just as much as anybody else. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we're going to talk about some of them people through this series too. When water flows over a solid rock surface, I'm hard, I'm hard. But when it's in that environment, it wears away at it. You wouldn't think it would, but you can even go to your creek bed if, if I'm from the country and find a rock that hasn't been moved in a hundred years and it's smooth. Water did that over time. Hallelujah. Removing small bits that become andesol. Finally, finally, plants themselves can play a part. Here we go. When seeds, which is the word of God, fall into these cracks in the tephra layer, water is already working on it, softening it up, loosening it. Sandpaper from the wind is already working on it. Now seeds get into those cracks because we got some cracks now. That's why when I have altar calls on something, sometimes it's like, why has he got to say that today? Or why has it got to be right now? Because I sense a crack somewhere. And I'm trying to get a seed in that crack in somebody. 
I got to get a seat in that crack. Because the action of the roots help break apart that rock even more. And it forms even more opportunities for the plants to grow. And it helps the volcanic soil to maintain its fertile qualities. This process, however, takes a very long time. But if you're, just say, stand to your feet as the music plays. Whether you're in here, listen, you don't have to be a heathen, a part of Satan's Hounds of Hell network group. To understand the message that went forth. I mean, yes, those that are very hardened in life don't want nothing to do with God, don't want to do nothing. It's part of the reason why this church is here and the way it operates. We don't want to get you in and out. <laughs> because the longer you're in that environment, the longer that sand is rough. The more the water is running over. And eventually there's going to be a crack to put a seed in that's just going to open it up that much more. But also, you may be in here, listen, you're not a heathen, you love God, you read your Bible every day, you pray, you do meditate on the Word. I mean, you're a mature believer. But the process is still the same for you on that one part that You, you, just, you just don't want him to touch. So you don't have to be hard everywhere. You can just still have a place in your heart that's hard. But he still wants to get you in the environment. To put the sandpaper in the water. To soften it and loosen it up. And you keep coming long enough... Then all of a sudden, listen, even though everybody in the room seems bored, finally it was the day that the Lord said, there's a crack right there in them. Son, I want you to preach on this this morning. Nobody going to get it but then, but I've been saving this for them because there's a crack open now. Don't you think it's odd that if you heard preachers say, and it is true that, well, he would have died for just you. If it had been nobody else but you on the face of the earth, he would die for you. Well, if that's the case, don't you think that maybe man, nobody seemed to get anything out of that message today but one person? Would he not do it for that one too? Yeah. Amen. That's why as a family of believers out here, listen, when we come together, we need to be in unity. We need to be in one accord and not bored. Because it's not about you, pumpkin. Could be the person next to you. That finally God saw a crack. And because you praised when it was time to praise. And you worshipped. Hallelujah when it was time to worship. And you didn't just sit back and just be a spectator. And just kind of watch the movie playing out. But you energized yourself. You got in the spirit. Hallelujah. And you said, I'm going to worship my God because somebody needs it more than me today. And that helps to that sandpaper. That helps that water to form and shape. And we're all together for his place and his purpose. To be it known that even if we have 3,500 people jammed into a sanctuary auditorium, that there would be one person that walked in every Sunday that God says, all right, I want 3,500 of all of you. Get them. Because there's a crack. And you're my sandpaper. And you're my water. Because I guarantee you, if they walked into an environment where everybody looked like they'd been 
eating a lemon and they just sit soaked and sour and cross their arms and look at the watch. It would be what told you hindered the spirit. Everybody needs everybody. And remember, you reap what you sow. Because guess what? For all my older folk in here, time has a way of doing stuff, don't it? You might be the one that walks in that one Sunday. Because you had all kinds of stuff happen to you. You've had some hard places exposed in your life. And now, listen, you need... You're the one that needs it today. Against all odds.